1821. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you, Lord God. I ask of you, Lord God, to place me in the background. I ask of you, Lord God, to bring your Holy Spirit, to bring, bring light to what is being said today, Lord God, to minister it to each and every one of us, Lord God, to open up our hearts and our minds and our souls, and just break bread and to edify the church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So this scripture, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and, death, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. What's funny about this scripture, it says they that love it. It doesn't say they that love life shall eat the fruit thereof. Or it doesn't say they that love death shall eat the fruit thereof. So we can go both ways. So if you love life, you'll eat its fruit. If you love death, you'll eat its fruit. Amen? Amen. Amen. I remember when I was a kid, and um, my mother used to say, uh, sticks and stones may break your bones, but names you never hurt. And, you know, as much as that sounds good, it wasn't true. And I think she would say that just so I wouldn't be in trouble with the schools that I attended, or if I was uh, trying, if I was in her presence, whether it be at the supermarket or if she had something going on with her friends, she wanted to make sure that I behaved well. So, especially with other kids or other people who picked on me, and as they picked and picked and picked and said names, terrible names, you know, I was not supposed to retaliate. But let me get into a fist fight. Or I should say, let me get in trouble after school. And I came home running because somebody was chasing me. <laughs> then that sticks and stones doesn't come anymore. Because if I came in uh, beat up or somebody uh, threatened me, she's kicking me right out and said, handle that. Yeah. You know, I mean, I can tell you time and time again, my niece Josie is my witness. But that's another story. But it's funny because the fact of the matter is when people call us names and as much as we try to shake it off, you know, as we grow into from our childhood to our adulthood, we take shape to the names that we've been called. We take shape to the names that we've been called. Wow. And by saying sticks and stones may break our bones, but names have never hurt us, we take that to be verbatim and not really understanding that when somebody calls us a name and we don't shake it off, then we become whatever that name has been upon us. So, and the, the fact of the matter is, we all become walking zombies because the moment they start naming you stuff, the moment you pick it up and you never throw it away. The moment somebody starts naming or claim or putting labels on us, we put it in our pockets and we keep moving. Until that day when we get angry enough and we snap. And then we're either in jail or in the hospital. We're handcuffed. So what happens? It, it's just a bad situation. But we, we tend to uh, take these names and absorb it and we don't become the person that God has ordained us to be. And that's the scary part, because that's the way the world conforms. We conform into whatever we are being uh, shaped into. So, as a child um, getting into trouble, my mother turned to my brother Ronnie and told me I had to move in with him because 15, as Deacon Anthony said earlier, kind of hard to be a 15 year old with a belt. He's like, really? You know, not being rude or 
or being disobedient, but it was kind of like, you know, my punishment had to be something harder than just taking the belt. So, her, <laughs> her idea was the best thing to do because he's a lot older now, he's getting to be a little out of hand, was to move me to my brother Ronnie. So I moved in with my brother Ronnie, and uh, he put his rules and regulations down. That was a lot less strenuous to me, because my mother was real strict. Street lights come on, my friends are already out. You know, my brother was the type of person that says, you be in at 11 o'clock and don't be late. And I'm like, I'm in the bar? Yeah. On a school night? Okay, that's, that's how, <laughs> that sounds fine by me. You know, I said, what about the weekend? He says, I don't care about no weekend. If you stay over somebody's house, just give me a call. So I'm thinking, I'm loud and die. I can do whatever I feel, you know, to a certain extent. But again, names have its consequences. So I watched the way my two brothers lived and how they conducted themselves as men. You know, and they were in their 30s at the time. And I remember how the hair says, my brother Ronnie bought a house on Sackett Street. Six bedrooms, two bathrooms. We thought we were like living in a castle compared to where we came from. So his car broke down. We had to walk to my brother Butch's house. My brother Butch lived down Whitney Street, across the street from the park, right from the park. And I remember walking at night, and we get pulled over, not pulled over, but the cops stop us. And the cops, doesn't matter how much money my brother made, because my brother, both my brothers are electricians, were electricians. Didn't matter what they drove, didn't matter what they had in their pockets, or how they dressed, or how they looked. But because they were of color, they belittled my brother. And my thing is, in the neighborhood, you're just a, a, a boy with money. That's the way they looked at my brother. So if they looked at him like that, and he's a, just a boy with money, that makes me, because I didn't have any money, I'm just a boy. And I'm trying to be nice, but that could have said words. You see what I'm saying? So when it comes to uh, uh, people being labeled, they take that in and they talk it, and that's, they become uh, whatever they are being labeled. And what I mean by labor, I'm not talking about his father, uh, uh, she's just a sucker, or they're just, uh, he's a liar. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about labels that that uh, you look at that won't change you for the better. And you got to, I want you to remember something. As a seed, in order for it to grow, you have to throw dirt, dirt on, on that seed. It has to be covered in order for it to be a plant. So I understand labels can, can have its, its, uh, its uh, negative aspect to it, but you have to, we have to overcome it. We have to overcome it, and not only do we have to overcome the labeling that, that people put on us, we also have to overcome labeling other people. Mm -hmm. And that's something that we, uh, I don't want to say as a church, but we as a people, we do, and sometimes we don't do it consciously, I just think we do it just because of the being, being in our humanism. Being human, we just do it because we, we lash out. And it's, especially when you're getting ahead. Especially when you know that God is uh, bringing you to your blessing. Especially when you know God is taking you out of a dark place and into a light. You're going to have people call you names. True. People are going to, they're going to be haters. They're just True. going to be haters. That's the way the world works. It spins. Because of the fact that they don't like the way your blessing is coming. Amen. And they're not getting that blessing because they don't want to put in the work. And when I mean the work, I'm talking about knowing who Christ is. We get stuck. Or they get stuck. But it, what it all starts out when it comes to labeling, as a, a black man standing here, I could say that if it wasn't for God, I'd still be fear. I'd still fear the cops mm -hmm. because of the fact that's the way I grew up. If they treated my brothers like that, why wouldn't they treat me that way? Mm -hmm. So now my my 
by me being labeled or having this fear, I also uh, in, inherit this fear because of that, that I pass it to my kids and my kids pass it to their kids. You know, it's, it's easy for a woman that has a couple of kids that's not being married, she'll get laid. Oh, she sleeps around. It's easy for somebody that gets out of jail to be labeled an ex-convict or even still a convict. If he doesn't have a job, oh, he's lazy. You know, if he doesn't have a car, he's just loitering. I mean, it's easy to become all these labels because of the fact that's the way people look at it. people of color. Or people in just in general. If you don't have what, what success looks like, that's what they do. They want to just generalize everybody. And then they expect you to, to do what? To just lay, lay around and, and take it? But when you know Christ, you don't have to worry about that because those battles he deals with. If, you know, they call you something, then so what? I know my God calls me. Yes. I know what he calls me. And if you can't match that, then what, Then I don't even need to be in your presence. Yes. You ain't saying nothing that uh, is, is going to inspire me or encourage me to do better. So what's the point? Right? What's the point? So, the thing about labeling is it, pro it prevents you from growing. It prevents you from being mature or growing into your maturity. And it prevents you from accepting challenges in your life. It prevents you from excelling. Nobody goes to the gym and where well, they shouldn't. Nobody should go to the gym and just have a conversation with somebody else lifting weights. Because you're not being challenged, you're not, you're not having anything that's going to show any outcome of why you're going to the gym in the first place. You know, nobody goes to work and puts in 40 hours a week and don't expect the check. They, you go in and you do what you gotta do and you are expecting the check so you can pay your bills and do what you have to do with that salary or that income. So it's the same way, you know, we have to go and, and look at God and understand that there are going to be challenges in our walk. There's going to be challenges to make us grow, you know, and once you become complacent, that's when the challenges come. You know, the moment you sit down and stop relaxing, that's when God says, okay, you, you all set? Are you all rested up? Because we got work to do. True. I need you to do a, B, and C. True. And now it becomes even harder and harder and harder. But he never gives you more than what you can do. That I can promise you. You know, and even if it looks like it's overwhelming, God's going to say, you know what? I'm going to like lift up on this side, but you're going to lift up the front. I got the back end, you got the front end. But we're moving forward. We're definitely moving forward. You know, so I just want you to understand that it's. The, the understanding that God is not so much as uh, allowing you to be labeled and just deal with it, but also look at it as being a challenge. Because even in scripture, Jesus was even challenged by when people saw him, they didn't look at him as the son of God. They belittled him, him and said, oh, he's the son of a carpenter. That's all he is. He, that's Mary's son. His brother, J James, and Judas and all that, that's just, they, they never said that he was the son of David because now we're looking at something that's higher than men. We're looking at somebody that has power in the title. Not so much as just somebody that's just some whole hum chicken bum off the street. You know, and because of the fact that he came into the synagogue and preached the word of God, they want to belittle him. They want to call him different names and stuff like that. So what I'm saying to you is if, it's, if, if it can happen to Christ, it can happen to us. Amen. Because that's True. what it is. That's the way the world is. They're going to put you in a situation to make you at their level, stoop to their level, their level. You know, because as so, soon as success comes, again, that's when the challenges come. You know, we all walk this life, and when life happens, sometimes it's a flat tire, sometimes it's all four tires. 
you know, and one, you could deal with one, but then you got four, you know, it's, it's multiplied by three, it becomes a little bit harder. But that doesn't mean you can't move forward. That means you just gotta, it's gonna take you longer than where you need to be. You know what I mean? It's gonna take you longer to, to your success. True. But God is always going to be with you and he's gonna be on time. So when people belittle you, people call you names, and it, gets, and it gets to the point where you can't take it, I just want you to realize that the blessing is that much more sweet. That's how God works. You know, me and Deacon Anthony were, were rushing. Actually, I was rushing because I had uh, a gentleman that was coming by to look at the fence, and so I'm running out of time. I had to drop him off, and I was already dressed. And then Deacon Anthony called me. He locked his keys in the car. And we had to be at a certain place at a certain time at this funeral. And it was just one thing after another, you know. And, you know, and the people were late. Let's just put it that way. Not to say that we're t- the, we have the excuse of being late, but it was just that's the way it works. But we're trying to get to one place to another, and that's how the devil always tries to bring you to a place where... It gets ugly. True. Whether it be people, whether it be at your workplace, whether it be at the supermarket. You know, you just bump into people that are going to try to make obstacles in your life. And that's where the labeling comes in. And nobody can label us but God. And when he labels us, it's because of the fact that we're, we're chosen. We become peculiar. And I'm not talking about black seed oil. I'm talking about <laughs> peculiar. We become that. We become a, 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 an ambassador for God. We have titles. We become royalty. And see, no, the world's not going to call you that because once they stop calling you that, that means that they have to step up to the plate. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. So I just want you to keep that in mind and keep focusing that. Nobody can lift you up higher than what God is Amen. Or Amen. 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 Praise God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I just thank you again, Lord God, because we know that everything that you say, Lord God, is ordained by you, Lord God. We ask of you, Lord God, to just open up our hearts, Lord God, that we can just soak up what you have given us, Lord God. And while all heads are our Father, and eyes are closed. If there's anyone here that would like to know who Christ is, please raise your hand. Praise God. Those that would like to be or rededicate themselves, please raise your hand. Praise God. Well, I just want to thank you, Lord God, again, Lord God, for those that are here that heard your word that we can break life, break your bread of life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you for your As always, so much in the message. Another good word. Amen. 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 We can continue to pray. That's the Lord um, to eat our pastor. Amen. That was Amen. good. That was a good word. Good yeah, it was. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Let us all stand. All hearts and minds, praise God. Let us pray. To the Father, to the to Son, Son, to, to the, the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, may you guide us in a hedge of protection and our traveling mercies and just break life, break the bread of life each and every day in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. amen. I don't know how to cut it off.